third-party JavaScript libraries we're going to get into. And the main point of these is that we don't want to reinvent the wheel when we're dealing with AJAX or when we're doing web development. They're going to simplify JavaScript for us. They're going to simplify CSS for us. And they're going to simplify DOM scripting or DHTML. Um, by that I mean when we're using JavaScript to interact with the document object model um, or with HTML, that's really called DOM scripting. It used to be called DHTML, but it had a lot of baggage back in the late 90s. Um, so the new standards approach to doing DHTML is DOM scripting. And that, all that means is that we're going to be using JavaScript to play with our CSS and to play with the actual DOM. Um, so these libraries will help do that easier. And then they're also going to manage cross-browser support for us. That's really big. So I won't have to, when I write, you know, if I'm trying to, to create an AJAX object, I wouldn't have to check for three different browsers. Um, they'll do all that behind the scenes. Because frankly, our JavaScript developers or our developers don't really need to necessarily do all that extra work if we've got other people that have already been putting in time to do that. And then the last is that another important part of these third-party libraries is that they're going to help us with AJAX connections, with, air, you know, with error checks, with sending and responses. Um, they'll actually do most of the work for us in AJAX. And they will check for us to make sure that the ready state is actually 4. And they'll check for us to make sure that the response is actually 200, that the status is. So they make, they make our lives a lot easier as programmers. So there are three that we're going to look at today. There are a plethora of libraries, but I think these are three solid frameworks. There are some other ones that are good too, but um, let's just take a look at these. I say three even though there are four up here. There's Prototype and Scriptaculous. Those really go together as, as one complete framework. Um, and then there's the Yahoo user interfaces. And then there's also jQuery. So let's first take a look at this prototype and Scriptaculous. Prototype is aimed to improve JavaScript. Um, by itself, it doesn't have a whole visual set like we'll see with Scriptaculous that you need to have as part of it. Uh, but it provides like a middle ground before just doing this dirty JavaScript development and between the visual libraries. So it actually uses a base language not only for Scriptaculous, but also for another library called Rico that does visual effects. Um, how it works is it kind of extends the, the JavaScript library classes. Um, uh, what I mean by that is in JavaScript, um, JavaScript you can't do classical inheritance uh, and typical object-oriented programming. You don't have private and public members. Uh, but you can, through prototype, this prototype library, you can do like class.creates and, and develop your own. It actually lets you do object-oriented programming in ways that programmers are used to. And it's, it's interesting, it actually, the name of it is prototype, and I think it's a, you know, it's a play on words because in JavaScript you do prototype, prototype inheritance. That's the kind of object-oriented programming that's done in prototype. So it's kind of like it's extending prototype by calling it prototype. So it can be a little confusing. But um, anyway, the way that, as I said, it's going to extend the JavaScript language classes, and then it also is going to give you some shortcuts to be able to do JavaScript quicker. And those shortcuts kind of come through this dollar sign with, with the uh, function, this dollar sign function. Um, so why would you want to use it? Uh, Prototype is a base library for Scriptaculous and Rico, like I said. It's going to let you do class-style object-oriented programming. Um, it's going to extend the DOM with many useful methods. It's going to add extra functionality that you couldn't normally do with JavaScript. Um, and another reason it's good is that it really has development that's driven by the Ruby on Rails framework. And if any of you have heard of Ruby on Rails, it's really it's a new up-and-coming language. Ruby is in itself, and the Ruby on Rails, is, it's going to be around for a while. So you know that Prototype is going to be a solid framework for, for quite a few years. Um, its size is 124 kilobytes uncompressed, um, which makes it the, one of the larger libraries in the three that we're going to look at. Who's using it? If you want to go look at real world users, you can, and that will give you a list of a, a lot of companies that are using it. And a lot of people use Prototype. It was one of the first to come out, um, Prototype and Scriptaculous, so it's, it's a solid contender. Uh, if you want to use Prototype, what you do is you go to prototype prototypejs.org and you download this Prototype JavaScript. And then you just put that on your server and you make a link to it. And you do that in your side your head tag. Right there's the link. And then you just start developing with it. So 
if you wanted to, as I said, I had some shortcuts. So I, before we did like a document.get elements by tag name, and if we wanted to do a document.get element by ID, which would go and find any element that has an ID in it, uh, which is a long way to do it on top is the JavaScript. On the bottom right here is all you have to write for prototype. So it really simplifies a lot. It takes down a lot of the code that you need to write, shortens your code. Also array literals, if you're not real fond of writing arrays like this with all of the ticks and the commas, it's going to let you do array literals like this with a dollar sign W, and it will just separate on white space. Um, and then if you want to use CSS selectors, um, to be able to access different elements within your web page, you can. So this is saying that we have a, a list item with a class on it called basic. And the cool thing then with prototype is, as I said, it extends, it extends the functionality of JavaScript. So you can do add class name, which is not a typical JavaScript thing, but prototype lets you. And then you can just put inside of there, all done. So now our list item um, that had basic on it will also have all done on it. And we can just do a dot hide, and that will um, actually go and find that, that element and then hide it from view from the user. Okay? Uh, we'll take a look at how Prototype works with Scriptaculous in a second. Um, I'll actually show you an example. And then if you want to do Ajax, Ajax is very simple in these libraries. All you do here is new Ajax.request. You pass in a URL. You pass in your method, whether it's get or post, and then you have that callback function that I talked about. And all you do here is you use right here on success, and that means when the, the callback comes and when the request comes back and it's successful, um, that it's going to run this callback function. And you can write your callback function to do whatever you want it to do, like we had done before. Um, we had made it. We had injected inner HTML. We injected uh, text into inner HTML. Okay. Really simple to do Ajax with Prototype. Prototype, as I said, needs another language with it, a visual component. So it needs Scriptaculous or Rico, something like that. And Scriptaculous then is aimed to create user interfaces and to make them easy. It's going to help developers build their own controls, or another word for controls, kind of like widgets. Um, and it's going to let you do flash animation, do flash-like animation without flash. You know, it's going to have your drag and drop capabilities. It's going to have your sliders, all that stuff. Um, so as I said here, it's a, basically a DOM-based effects engine. And what's nice about Scriptaculous is that it comes in different modules for different controls or effects. So you can just go through its documentation and pick out which actual module you want to use, and then actually include, um, include only those specific modules. So that will try to keep down the size a little bit. Um, this, the size is 156 kilobytes, so it's also pretty big. Together, they're about 300 kilobytes. So you would definitely need to compress those. But if we were actually to go about using modules, we could make that easily cut in half. Why do you want to use it? It is the king of user interfaces. Um, and people like Apple are using Prototype and Scriptaculous. That should be good enough to say that it's a, it's a solid graphic user interface. How do you actually use it? Again, you go to Scriptaculous' website right here, http script.aculo.us, and you're going to download um, the Scriptaculous JavaScript file. Since it's based on Prototype, you need to have Prototype as a dependency first, and then you do your Scriptaculous. Now, I have down here, if you didn't want to include your whole Scriptaculous file because you wanted to save some space, you can just do here, question mark load equals effects drag and drop, and that would just say we want to load the effects in the drag and drop modules. So let's just look at how we do a simple fade. Um, if we want to do a fade effect, it's really simple with these two libraries. It doesn't get hardly any simpler than this except with jQuery that we're going to look at. Um, but here you do effect, with this, which is the effects module, dot fade. And then inside of there you do this, and this is the argument that's referring to this actual div, ob this div element. And then we're doing a duration of three, so that means that this is going to fade out over three seconds. 